All right, so just like we did with position and velocity, let's try to graph the acceleration of a car over time. This is the new motion of the car. Like before, we can imagine there's someone in the car looking at the speedometer and writing down velocity of the car at different points in time. And this is what we get. At zero seconds, the velocity is zero and the car isn't moving. At one second, the velocity is five meters per second. At two seconds, the velocity is 10 meters per second. And at three seconds, the velocity is 15 meters per second. Now what we can do is calculate the average acceleration of the car between each pair of time points using our equation for acceleration. And I'll do the math for us. What we'll find is that the acceleration between seconds zero and one is five meters per second squared. Between seconds one and two, it's five meters per second squared. And between seconds two and three, it's still five meters per second squared. So we can see that the velocity is increasing over time, but the acceleration of the car stays the same. And that makes sense. The car has some acceleration, and acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So the car's velocity changes over time. So what would our graph of acceleration look like? As always, we have time along our horizontal axis, and now we have acceleration along the vertical axis. For the period of zero to one seconds, we know the acceleration is five meters per second squared. From one to two seconds, it's five again. And from two to three seconds, it's still five. And there we go. We have a graph of the car's acceleration over time. However, like we covered with velocity, this is just a graph of the car's average acceleration plotted across each time period. But could we do what we did with velocity? Instead of just calculating the average, could we measure the car's acceleration at different points in time? Actually, we could. There are things called accelerometers, which measure acceleration. And interestingly enough, you have one in your phone. So like we said, this car has an acceleration causing the car to speed up and the car's velocity to increase but the actual value of acceleration doesn't change over time. In this course, and in most courses, this is as far as we're going to go. We won't deal with accelerations that change over time.